It's my sincere request. I'm going to request Konida Lapawan Kalyanji to request him not to scream and shout. Please, thank you. Uh, as I'm used to a two hour speech is minimum, I request Master of Ceremony to remind me once my time is uh, fin finishes. For me, as you all came from uh, different parts of India and who I am, the ambitious, want to serve the nation, I would like to share my experiences as the way how I established the party. And I think my experiences might give you a different kind of insight. So that might help you for your future and to contemplate. And if any mistakes I have done or anything which I have done good, maybe that would be something which you can understand about your own journey by looking at my sharing, by understanding my own experiences. For me, when I, when I had established Genesiana Party, it was for me, it's a national service, not for personal recognition, not for power, but for change. A change which is needed in our society, in our country, which we always wanted. Instead of sitting idle and having millions, having crores, having great popularity, is it I had a cont really contemplated, would I end up like most of the people, or shall, can I, will I contribute some, at least a part of, a part of my life to the nation, uh, to build for nation service. So it was, suddenly it didn't happen after become an actor, though I came from a uh, small beginnings, I came from a lower middle class family. My pain was always about the society which I used to watch around, the pain, the kind of sufferings people used to go through. Nothing happened to me at a personal level. I never had a shortage of food, reasonably good schooling. But my pain was towards society. When I started gaining knowledge about the society around me, I started reading, maybe looking at our all our freedom fighters, looking, uh, reading their biographies, Somewhere I felt the in immense urge and intense urge like to do something for the nation, to, be, to do something for the, some kind of contribution for the nation. This started at the age of 14. So like you, when I started getting into my teens, I was looking forward some kind of ideology which I would like to embrace. As Digvijayji said, said, look before you leap. So what kind of ideology would you lean into? What, 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 what exactly should I embrace? So I, had, I was understanding Marxism, I was understanding socialism, I was trying to understand capitalism. Especially when you were a kid growing up in the 80s, when you were a teenager in the 80s, there was a, quite a turbulent political atmosphere within India and around the world. Right from uh, Punjab terrorism, Khalistan terrorism to uh, LTT, uh, and ac across the globe, there is still unified, uh, Germany was uh, divided, and apartheid was there in South Africa. So all these different political climates around, at a global level, the national level, really it drew in me crazy. One point of, at one point, at one part, you look at the freedom fighters who had selflessly sacrificed their lives. And another way, always I was looking forward, the nation would be greater as keep, every day passes by, every day. I thought this is going to be another beautiful uh, year next year, but I was quite disappointed as a kid. At the way they were looked at the corruption, the way I looked at the nepotism, it was quite disappointing for me. Always my desire was a commoner to be something, a commoner to stand for the oppressed. But the society around us, it is only the dynastic rule and everything really bothered me. So finally I went into, I became an actor, but that social consciousness never let me, never left out of me. I was quite keen, I was watching around, observing things around, reading a lot, absorbing a lot. But finally, when state, our state has been, uh, Andhra Pradesh had been divided the way it got divided, and everything I was looking at it, how the, so, uh, the political leadership and everything, how conveniently it has become. The power politics really disturbed me. Instead of being an armchair thinker, 
I was thinking loud within myself or contemplated for uh, quite, quite a time. I said, would I sit like everyone else? Or would I come forward and do something? I thought, without any expectations, without seeking power, but I want to stand for the voice of the oppressed. I want to be the voice for the neglected. I want to be the voice who are really meek and helpless. That's how I formed Genesena Party. And there were a lot of people, youngsters. Today, I said all of you come from different parts of a country and you're looking forward to become some kind of leaders and leadership and you want to have an active role in uh, politics. In 2007, when I had started Common Men Protection Force, which is supposed to stand for the oppressed and meek and helpless, I had met a lot of young people, both boys and girls. But what I had noticed in them was, at least most of them, they need change within shortest time possible, like, a two min, uh, like an instant noodle. And 2007, I looked at the youth there then, the way they wanted everything immediate, they don't have the patience. Then that's what I thought, okay, let me walk the talk. So then from there onwards, I went on continue, continuing. In 2014, I started the party. And I had lost my first election in 2019. Even I, my, I myself lost in both the places which I had contested. But that didn't stop me continuing my political journey. Because when I had started, <laughs> so what must go? So what must have made me to be here, what must have made me to continue here is, it is not for personal recognition. There is no ego in defeat. If you really love this nation, if you really care for our motherland, if you really care for the meek and helpless, nothing deters you. A defeat of any kind of defeat, nothing it does not deter you. And my commitment for my nation, my commitment for my nation came from our predecessors, our freedom fighters looking at the sacrifice of Bhagat Singh at the age of 23. At the age of 23, few, some people around in this period, at this times, maybe they're doing a, going for a hotel in pubs and partying, but at the age of 23, Bhagat Singh, he, gave a, he sacrificed himself to wake up the nation for the generations to come. And that kind of Bhagat Singh is inspiration to me. And so in spite of my failure, as a political uh, party to get into the sunset. But what made me to continue is, I mean, we are able to help. Being a party, we just had got one seat, still we are able to help people. Very recently, I would like to uh, uh, share a case with you. Around four years back, a 14-year-old girl in Karnul, in the state of Andhra Pradesh, a student from residential school, one day she bid goodbye to her mom, Normally she would come back by the evening, but that day she didn't turn up. And this happened in 2015. Her mother got a call, receives a call from the school authorities, res residential school authorities, saying that your daughter is not feeling well. Please, would you like to come and see? Please take her home. By the time she goes there, she's dead. And she's, it was like as if she was, uh, she hung herself. That's what the uh, school authorities says. And later we, they realized she was raped and she was killed. And justice was not done. And that mother, after I had a, such a colossal defeat in 2019 in these elections, I was sitting in my office, I was handling my own failure, and this mother of that kid, that girl, with her husband, and one more younger, youngest daughter, she comes and meets me. She shares her experience. It's like, Anna, this is what happened to my daughter. And everything is there, right from the certificates of uh, uh, she has been raped and everything, and everything, whatever has to be, the, color, the perpetrators has to be punished, but nothing had been done. We have, and because they're powerful, the case is not moving forward. If it is in cinema, it is like, it's a quite a dramatic scene. You go, do justice in two, three minutes and come out. And you get uh, money for that. But in real life, I felt so helpless, so painful to look at a wailing mother who lost her daughter. It was churning for me, like you know, my stomach was churning, looking at her pain and agony. 
And I said, and people whom we have to fight against, they're very powerful people. Who has a lot of muscle, who has tons of money, even for me, to fight against them was not an easy task. I told her, okay, I'll look into it. I don't know how to take it forward. Then I went ahead, slowly in two, three months, we, we gathered certain, uh, we gained some strength, we started addressing, and now finally a, few, a week back, we did a, a huge protest rally in our hometown called Karnol, and we got the state government to make sure the cases, the case will be taken by CBI. And, <laughs> and where the state government, for all these years, they had neglected, the previous regime neglected and the current regime neglected for a while. Now it cannot be. They could not do it anymore. You know why? It's because if we are committed, if I would have needed a seat, if I would have wanted to be a Rajya Sabha member, if I wanted to be a parliamentarian, if I wanted to be an assembly, things would have been different. But my purpose here is to stand for the people who are oppressed and helpless. And as long as I'm committed to it, I'm fine even if I lose multiple times. But I will stand for this nation, I'll stand for the weak and weak. So as you all are maybe looking forward to gain something, paying 1,000 rupees to be here in this kind of uh, seminar for four days, I said, truly I have to appreciate you and truly applaud you for your commitment and for coming all the way from, from different parts of India. And I appreciate Rahul, Rahulji to initiate all this in School of MIT, MIT, MIT of uh, especially for such an eminent institution to take forward this kind of seminars, which would really help people. It's not just people who are within this auditorium. Pan-India, who, who are looking at this seminar, they really get inspired and influenced. And I truly appreciate you for your patience. And I only thing I would like to share with only a few, or just a few more things. You, I want you to understand, no matter what, don't come with a short-term plan. If you really want to be the change agents in politics, at least try to give at least a decade to two decades. I have committed myself at least two and a half decades in 2014 that I would commit for my nation, I would commit for my motherland, that I will, whatever I'm capable of doing, I'll do it irrespective of whatever that I gain or, I'll gain or lose. I'm going to give 25 years of my life for the nation which gave me birth. So don't expect, don't expect immediate changes. Don't expect immediate transformation will happen because your time is very valuable. So I want you to be practical. I want you to be really pragmatic. So I want you to have a loads of time, loads of patience. Don't try to be mere armchair thinking. So if you don't talk, talking about social media, any, anything is nothing, there is no, no uh, the problem with any medium or any kind of paper is not about how you do it, how, you, how you're going to use it. There are people on, on Twitter or on other social accounts who will do a very constructive job. There are either another part of individuals who will be very destructive. It depends on which side you are on. Always try to be constructive, be properly, like analyze a topic, don't try to abuse people, be practical. And regarding the time, I want you to understand, give enough time for yourself. Don't try to be, by the time you're, 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 you're almost been early 20s, at least, you have to give yourself at least 10 to 15 years to see a little change, a glimmer of hope. Just a little light to be seen on the other edge. It, you, you, you yourself at least 10 to 15 years time. Don't expect immediate results. It is not an instant noodle to see results. But I had immense despair, immense despair when I came into politics. I knew all this. I had visualized all this. I had visualized my own failure. I had visualized my own success. But very strongly I had visualized is one day I will do my bit part to transform, to stand for this nation. And which I'm able to continue my journey just because I didn't seek anything. I didn't seek any personal power. I, I sought personal power to people who never, who does not have any power. 
instead of giving your giving out your opinions on mere on social media is not going to help alone you should come out in open you should pr practically you should do some political action mere attending seminars is one thing gaining knowledge is one thing but actually at the grassroots level when you work the kind of knowledge is going to be different the kind of experiences will be different you will be a transformed personality so mere attending seminars is good reading books is good gaining knowledge is good unless it is not practically been seen not being at a grassroots level if you don't go to the places if you don't exp expose yourself certain experiences the leadership quality will would not come out so i request you all to look into that instead of mere gaining knowledge i want you to look into it try to gain some experience at a fair, at a, a grassroots level gain some real experiences uh, not experiences at a mere sitting on the internet that much uh, i would like to convey to you an ounce of action is better than a ton of talk be prepared to just a bit a bit of practicality instead of gaining a mere talking i want you to do a bit of uh, a bit practical get into hands on experience that would really help you this and what inspired me what gives me hope is when i say 25 years of my life what made me to say that statement is i'm not working for this times i'm working for the generations to come i'm working for your generation it would take me time this would because when i look at my own son's age who is around 14 a little younger than that i feel we have taken the greatest sacrifices done by our freedom fighters that's they right from bhagat singh to any n number of uh, great leaders that sacrifice themselves and yet we don't carry that legacy we are selfish and we are completely self centered i even i thought of i question myself i don't want to be the group of who, who just think about themselves who are selfish i don't want to be a part of that group whether i'm being an actor or not whatever best i could do i want to be i don't want to be that that kind of society who just merely thinks in a selfish manner so i came out i'm doing my bit part i also request you to do your bit part there are enough political ideologies out there i want you to evaluate each and every ideology consciously understand everything what is the pros and cons of each and every ideology whatever the political parties are there if you want to go into them join in them but i want you to understand completely is it what you are then please completely embrace it stick to it and fight for it so in and what made what made me to say this is in the country the moment in my one of my the videos they had shown that swami vekananda the great men like swami vekananda the great saints like swami vekananda who inspired me and martin luther king junior who came to india when he came to india when he was in bombay when he was looked at the riches of bombay and the extreme poverty of bombay side by side and he was saying only in a country like india if it is if the same situation would have been prevailing in any other country it would have led to bloody revolution but only in india how come it is nothing is happening why people are still able to smile that is the greatness of our nation that is the greatness of our nation this is a land of this is a land of swami vekananda land of subramanya bharati land of narayan guru eminent great science eminent personalities because who had selflessly sacrificed for this nation because of them because of the spirit this country can never get will never get disturbed no matter how many selfish elements are there no many what kind of uncouth people are out there but because of the spirited the kind of spirit we have and is nothing going to disturb that spirit you going to carry it forward and whatever bit you can do for this nation and that is going to be the hope i have a great hope in this generation i have an extreme hope in this generation paying 1000 rupees to be all the way from here all the way to delhi to listen to this kind of peer talks from different individuals eminent individuals that shows this country is going towards greatness 
and I truly appreciate you for being here. I truly congratulate you for being here. And one of my, I would like to end there with this uh, for, uh, small words of poetry in Telugu. This is, this is written by uh, Mr. Seshendra Sarma, who, is a, who was a recipient of uh, Sahitya Academy Award. It, this Na Desam Na Prajul, my country and my men. This was shortlisted for Nobel Prize, though it was not selected. The, if you ever feel, as you want to get into politics, as you want to be leaders, leadership is all about solitude, solitariness. You will be completely isolated. Not even a friend will stand by you. Not even a friend will understand you, what you're going through. At these times, what you need is, you, need, you have to keep on hooking, get hooked to certain inspirational lines. So try to read a lot of poetry. Try to read a lot of biographies. So for me, when I go through a complete loneliness, a depression, yet certain times I go through. So I only think of one thing. When I feel extremely depressed, when the truth is not going to win, that's what the real circumstances are. So at that time, I read this four lines. Samudram, vakadi kala digari kuchoni maragatu. Tufanu gunti chittam maradam maragatu. Parvatam yavadaki vangi salam chayi. Nen pidikiri matte kaavach chikani. Gunti tite vaka desa pujanda kunanta pagaram. So, a loose translation of this is, uh, you have to uh, forgive me for my English translation, though I'm not a poet, though I'm not good in English. So I prefer to, it's a loose translation of what I said right now. A deep ocean will never bark at one's feet. A twisting tornado, a twisting tornado's voice will never say yes, master. A mighty mountain will never bend and bow. Maybe I'm a handful of dust. But if I raise my voice, it will reflect the pride of our national flag. We should be grateful for the nation we are born in. And I have, be patriotic, be accountable, be responsible for your actions. And this country, we are of different ethnic groups, a different linguistic backgrounds, different cultural backgrounds, yet always I, this country amazes me. We come from different backgrounds, different linguistic barriers, cultural barriers, yet we feel as one. We feel as one India. We feel as one nation. That is the greatness of this nation. No matter how many foreign forces would try to come and divide us, we will stand as one. We will be united as one. So. Thank you for giving me this opportunity and I'm grateful to you for listening to me and normally I end up my speeches with Bharat Mata Ki Jai. I would like to, I would be grateful if you say Bharat Mata Ki Jai and thank you and Jai Hind and Bharat Mata Ki Jai. Jai. Bahut, bahut abhar. कल्याण जी कई बार आपसे अनुरोध किया जा चुका है पर आप भारत के होनहार नागरिक हैं एक बार में मान ली जाए तो लगेगा नहीं कि हमने मान ली कोई बात नहीं महसूस होता है अपनी भाषा सुनकर कुछ अलग महसूस होता है वो हुआ आपको आपने उसे अभिव्यक्त किया साथ चलने का इरादा जब जवा हो जाएगा आदमी मिल आदमी से कारवा हो जाएगा तू किसी के पांव के नीचे तो रख थोड़ी जमी तू भी नजरों में सभी के आसमां हो जाएगा कल्याण जी ने जो बताया अपने वैभव को छोड़कर देश के लिए काम करना ये बड़ा काम है इसके लिए हम उन्हें साधुवाद देते हैं और अब हम इस क्रम में उन्हें बुला रहे हैं जो उत्तर प्रदेश से आते हैं समाजवादी पार्टी के राष्ट्रीय महासचिव हैं और उत्तर प्रदेश सरकार में भूतपूर्व मंत्री रहे हैं मैं चाहता हूं कि हमारी टेक्निकल टीम प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर अभिषेक मिश्रा जी के जीवन का चित्र स्क्रीन पर चलाए प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर अभिषेक मिश्रा जी
Abhishek Mishra is an Indian politician of the Samajwadi Party and a member of the Legislative Assembly of Uttar Pradesh, representing the Lucknow North.